Wood, the Screen Director's Playhouse. Company presents the uninvited director Laramie Dean. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a tale for Troubled Midnights, the motion picture drama The Uninvited, starring Tony Woodward in, his, in the role of Rick Fitzgerald. <laughs> in the morning, my skin creeping, my scalp crawling. I heard the dim surge of the ocean from the Devonshire cliffs far from my window. Only five o'clock, and then <laughs> I was sure now. I haven't dreamed that appalling crying. <laughs> That'd be my sister Pamela in the next bedroom. There was no electricity in this old house. I. I lit a candle. I went into the door leading into the upstairs hall. Rick! Oh! Oh, Pamela! You heard it too, then. What in heaven's name is it? I don't know. It comes from downstairs. It comes from everywhere and nowhere. I'm going down to search the place. It's no use, Rick. There's never anything there. You mean this has happened before? All the time. You were still in London while I was getting the house ready for us to live in. Well, why didn't you call me or write me about it? It's our home now. It's all we got to live in. <laughs> Sounds so terribly heartbroken. But there, there must be some logical explanation. It'll stop soon now. It always dies away at dawn. Ugh, no wonder we got this old place for such a low price. They tell me it stood empty for ten years before. <laughs> oh. The shutter blew open. The darn breeze. I must have forgotten to latch them. Listen. I know. The sobbing is gone. Oh, is that all for tonight? Is that all? It's every night, Rick. And if I don't get some sleep, I'll die. Oh, no, 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 no. Don't do that. <laughs> It'll be different tomorrow night, you'll see. Oh, hello. Aren't you the gentleman who bought this house for my grandfather? Why, yes, good evening. Good evening. I'm Stella Meredith. This was my mother's house. Well, come in, Stella Meredith. Thank you. I haven't been in this house since I was three. I've wanted to come so many times. Then why didn't you? Oh, my, my grandfather forbids it. He has some silly idea that I'm in danger. Nonsense. You should see the house, Stella Meredith, and I shall be your guide. And this is my old nursery. Like it? How pretty your sister has made it. That's very pretty perfume you're wearing. It's mimosa. Do you like it? Oh, very much. My mother always used mimosa. She died when I was three years old. 
Uh, oh. Must see the studio now where my father painted. Only it's the studio where I play the piano now. You may even persuade me into playing something for you. Flattering, thank you. It's a serenade to Stella Beister. You mean this, Stella? And this candlelight. Oh, it's the most exciting thing that has ever happened to me. Is it? Y yes. <laughs> Just came out that way. And the candles grew dim. There's a draft. Oh, Mother was so young and beautiful and she died so cruelly. Mother! Stella! Mother! Mother! Stella! Come back! Mother! Stella! I gathered my scattered senses and jumped up and ran after her. I found her standing amazed at the foot of the stairs. There's something evil in this house. We have to go. Stella! But she was at the front door, her hair flying, running wildly in the darkness, heading for the cliffs. Stella! I shouted after her. Stella, come back! Shouted again, pleading with her. Stella, no! The cliffs, I thought. Stella, the cliffs! The cliffs and the boiling sea beneath. Stella! Whatever sinister force that had driven her out of the house was now driving into the destruction on those killing rocks. The brink was only a few yards away, a few steps. I reached for her, and my fingers caught in her belt, and I pulled her back. Back from the very edge of that awful place. Stella! What's the matter? Matter? You were going over the edge. Was I? Why'd you do it, Stella? What drove you towards that? There. Why, nothing. 
nothing. I, I didn't feel I was in any danger. Look below you. Oh, the sea. Yes. This is where my mother fell. Your mother fell here? By this dead tree. She, she... Are, are you all right? Help me. Stella! Will she be all right, Dr. Scott? She's resting nicely upstairs, Miss Pamela. Well, is Stella entirely safe up there, alone? Why not? Well, in the light of what just happened. You're the one who sneers when I say this house is haunted. And everyone in the village knows the house is peculiar. Well, could you tell us anything about her, Doctor? Did you know about Carmel? Carmel? The Spanish model Stella's father painted. Oh, yes. Stella's father was in love with Carmel. It was an open scandal. But didn't Mrs. Meredith know about it? Well, I suppose she just accepted the situation. Where is Carmel now? She died in this very house a week after Mary Meredith fell to her death from the cliffs out there. Oh, she did fall then. Ironically, she fell trying to save her rival from committing suicide. Or so they say. Rick, Dr. Scott, don't you notice the scent in the room? No. I do. Yes. It's heliotrope. No, it's Mimosa. Stella's mother was fond of it. Stella tells me that parrots come back. What? Upstairs. Stella's not alone anymore. I know it. Come on. <laughs> She's gone. I'm here. Stella, darling. At the window. Now, don't be frightened. I'm not frightened. Don't you know who it is in your house? It's my mother. Your mother? Did you see her? No, but when I woke up, I, I felt her in the room. The scent of mimosa was all around. I could feel her warm presence everywhere. And I felt something else. Something I've never known in my whole life. The knowledge that someone loves me very dearly. You'd better take her home, Rick. No! No, Mother is here! She wants me with her! Your mother is dead, Stella. I know! But your grandfather will miss you. He'll be furious if he finds you here. I know, but but I love it here! I'll always come back! Another time, Stella. Another time. <laughs> Three, four, five. There it was again. Her grandfather was right. There was danger in this house for Stella. In the studio when we first felt its presence, I did smell mimosa. But in that moment before dawn with that awful sorrow in the house, I suddenly knew. I knew there was a cold, cruel spirit that hated Stella, and the warm-scented spirit that loved her. There was that one ghost. <laughs> you are listening to the Good Night Theatre Company's presentation of The Uninvited, starring Tony Woodward in his role as Rick Fitzgerald. Pamela, I know this. Stella Meredith is in great danger in this house. She mustn't come here anymore. But she loves it, Rick. How can we possibly keep her away? By holding a seance. A seance? Only this seance will be rigged. We've got to fix it so that the ghost of Mary Meredith appears to say in effect... <clears throat> Stella, I'm your mother. Forget Windward House and I shall find peace and happiness. P.S. There is a tall, excruciatingly handsome man named Rick Fitzgerald who wants to marry you. It's wrong, Rick. I won't agree to deceiving Stella. You've got to break Stella's attachment to the dead. We will rig the seance. That very night, we held the seance. We all sat around the table, Stella and Dr. Scarlett. A single candle was burning. On the table, I chalked the alphabet in a big circle 
And the words yes and no opposite of each other. And the murdered wine glass stood in the center of the table. My state was set. I think the room is dark enough to begin. In course of things, we should all be alone. Ah, yes. Yes, so I understand. Well, what now? Everybody, put a finger in the glass. Now ask a question, Stella. Is there anybody here? If anybody, the glass is moving. Yes, the glass is on yes! Go on, Stella. Are you my mother? Yes, you don't want me to go away from Windward House, do you, mother? They want me to stay away, do you? Rick, let go! You're keeping the glass from moving! I'm not! Let go, I say! Better let matter take their courses. All right. You see, she said no. She doesn't want me to stay away. Look, look, the glass is moving. I, G, U, A, I guard. Guard me from what, mother? What? C, A, R, M. Carmel! That's enough! Who smashed the glass against the wall? You, Pamela? No one, Rick. No one was touching it. Stella? Stella? Stella's in a trance. Stella! Don't touch her. It may be dangerous. May I ask a question? No! It might help to try and reach her mind. Try it. Whoever you are, are you Mary Meredith? Stella's mother? Oh, this is awful. I won't ask her anything else. Is that Spanish, Scott? I... I don't know. She fainted. I'm afraid this has all been a dreadful mistake. This was wrong. But she'll never be cured until this house is cured. Until then, Stella must never come here again. I won't answer it. I'll answer it how I'll go. It was Stella's grandfather in a cold, bitter fury over her presence there and her condition. I'm outraged, you hear? Outraged! I'm very sorry, sir. It won't happen again. I warn you, it won't. My granddaughter will never enter this house again if I have to lock her up somewhere. Come, Stella. Stella was gone, but my work had just begun. I had to avert the tragedy. I had to solve the mystery of Windward House. But where to start? I went to see Dr. Scott. Any luck, Fitzgerald? Find anyone with a clue to what really happened here 17 years ago? N no. Everyone who is here with Meredith then seems to be dead. The trained nurse isn't. Trained nurse? I've been looking through the old casebook of my predecessor, Dr. Rudd. Oh? At the time of the tragedy, the Merediths employed a nurse for their child. A certain Miss Holloway. Holloway? Very, very much attached to Mary Meredith. Well, is she alive? How can we find her? She runs a place on Budwin Moor called the Mary Meredith Retreat in honor of her long dead mistress. Hospital? Ah, uh, no. Mental institution. <laughs> Strange woman. Strange place. Budwin Moor. I think I'd better have a serious talk with Miss Holloway. I shall be happy, Mr. Fitzgerald, to assist in any way I can concerning these manifestations at Windward House. To begin with, Miss Holloway, I know about the Merediths, Mary Meredith Carmel Triangle, 17 years ago. Yes, it was the delight of the local gossip. What were Mary and Carmel like? Extraordinary women, both of them. But Mary Meredith, she was a goddess. Even her talk was lovely and sparkly. Oh, the night we sat before her fireplace, planning our lives. Y yes. She met her humiliation and her fate magnificently. About Carmel. A Spanish gypsy, beautiful, crafty, and cruel. Why did Miss Meredith stand with the situation? She felt the decision to end it must come from her husband. Did it? Finally, to make it easier for Carmel, they took her to Paris, found a position for her, and left her there. 
Then they came back here with their infant daughter. For a while, they were almost happy together. Then? Carmel came back. She still wanted Mary's husband. Then one stormy night, Carmel had been told she must leave, this time for good. Oh, it was a ghastly scene. And finally, Carmel, in a rage for revenge, ran to the child's room, snatched her up, and ran towards the cliff. Mary raced after her. In the struggle, Mary fell to the rocks below. The baby was a pawn. What happened to Carmel? She escaped from the shore. The next morning, she crawled back in the early stages of thunder. I had to nurse her. I see. Now, please, I must be alone. What you tell me about Miss Holloway is very interesting, Fitzgerald. A fanatical and dedicated woman doctor. Dr. Rudd before me disliked her intensely. Professionally? Personally, how? Listen to this entry from Dr. Rudd's casebook for December 10th, 1932. Called to Inwood House. Meredith's model. Carmel Cassida. Double pneumonia. That is what Miss Holloway told me. December 12th. Carmel Cassida. Much worse. No attempt to warm her room. Found traces of snow in her bedroom. Snow? Spoke severely to Nurse Holloway. Absolutely criminal negligence. Well, isn't that a pretty serious charge, Doctor? When a man of Dr. Rudd's generation used it, it was very apt to mean murder. Miss Holloway. Murdered Carmel? She was very fond of Mary Meredith. Perhaps that's why Stella's grandfather sent her to Miss Holloway's for safekeeping this afternoon. You mean... Stella is there now? In that genteel madhouse? I venture she's safe with her mother's dearest friend. Who's also guilty of criminal negligence? Oh no, Dr. Scott, I must hurry. Be good enough and call my sister Pamela at Windward House. Say, I'll pick her up in 15 minutes. And call Miss Holloway, will you? Tell her to expect us. I'm on my way. Miss Holloway, when I was here before, why didn't you tell me Stella was here too? The presence of our guests is confidential. Please take us to her at once. She's no longer here. I sent her away when Dr. Scott called to say you'd be here. But why? She was the happiest person in the world when I told her she might return to Windward House. Windward House? But her grandfather sent her here to keep her away from Windward House. She loves it so. You knew we'd be away and you sent her there? Mary will be there. Oh, you hate Stella. You sent her to her death. Mary's waiting for Stella. You're insane! Hurry, Pam, it may be too late, even now! We drove headlong through the rain, racing to the Windward House. When we arrived in the early hours in the morning, the house was dark. We were on time. Stella hadn't arrived yet. And then, from inside the house... <laughs> It's Stella! The front door flew open and Stella ran out screaming fearfully! Ah! Ah! Running for the cliffs! Stella! Come back! <laughs> Something she'd seen or heard or felt in that horrible sick house of ours was sending her screaming in the darkness towards the windy cliffs! I ran after her, but she was very young and lively and driven by fear and drawn by demons that had overtaken her slowly. Oh, so very slowly, as in a terrible nightmare. And at the very brink of the cliffside, I dove for her and flung her to the ground. At the very brink of death, at the very end of darkness. Nothing but a few who bruises, Stella. You'll be fine. Dr. Scott, Rick, why would my own mother want to drive me to my death? Darling, whatever drove you from this house couldn't have been your mother. But it was! I I saw her! With a kind of mist that flowed softly in the dark, coming towards me, just as my father had painted her. Then why did you run away? I... I don't know. Something terrified me, drew me to the cliffs. <clears throat> uh, could the company enjoy one more excerpt from the casebook of Dr. Rudd? He's rather worthwhile. You'd be a man with the knowledge, Scott. <laughs> This entry is dated a little more than three years before the final tragedy on the cliffs. Meredith consultation in my office. Mrs. Meredith, afraid she's going to have a child, assured her she was not. The strange, cold, loveless woman refusing motherhood. But... Meredith, poor man wanting a child so desperately. But that's Stella! Now listen, 
an extraordinary household. Carmel, the Spanish girl, warships Meredith. A lovely, pitiful creature. All love and womanhood. Pitiful? What does it all mean? I, I don't understand. Stella, where are you born? In Paris. Where they took Carmel. They came back with her baby. Or at any rate, someone's baby. Rick? The man who stayed in Paris for a baby to be born, yes. But I think to Carmel, not Mary. They took the baby as their own to avoid a scandal. That's why Carmel came back, to be near her baby, near Stella. Then it was Mary Meredith who hated Stella, her mm. rival child. Mary Meredith, who tried to throw her baby from the cliffs and fell to her death. Then that's what Carmel want, waited to tell me all these years, that she was my mother, not Mary Meredith. I'm Carmel's daughter. <laughs> Rick, the mimosa. She's here. Oh, mother, mother, never weep again because now I know. Never cry again in this house where father loved you. Carmel, mother. <laughs> She's happy. Mother's happy. She's at peace at last. <laughs> Rick! Rick, look! That's the mist I saw! Mary Meredith! Dr. Scott, Pamela, get Stella out of here! I was alone, alone with the thing that drifted and floated, and menacing gestures filament in the open French doors, a luminous mist becoming a face that undulated horribly, a face filled with hatred and malevolence. I lifted the candelabra, with its flickering, guttering candles. <laughs> oh, come on, you icy fraud! If it's Stella you want, you're too late, Ray Meredith! You've tried enough to destroy Carmel's child! <laughs> oh, so much for the legend of your saintliness, and you can go along with it! <laughs> Magnificent. It's so dark, darling. Never brighter. Mary Meredith? Gone forever. And I always thought she was my mother. What? Good saints preserve me from ghosties and ghoulies and long-legged beasties. And a future mother-in-law like Mary Meredith. The Good Night Theater Company presents The Uninvited. The part of Rick was played by Tony Woodward, Izzy Spears as Pam, Victoria Randall as Stella, Luca Lepiani as Dr. Scott, Dan and Payne as Carmel and Mary Meredith, McKenna Schmaus as Miss Holloway, Bailey Adams as the announcer and Stella's grandfather, stage management and sound design by Jamie Niebel, Hazel Ann Seagrave, Caroline Wright, and Mila Yedinak. Flute by Rachel Suter. Saxophone, Veronica Stimfling. Trumpet, Emmy Slater. Editing by Alex Miller and Baker Morgan. Direction by Laramie Dean. This has been The Uninvited, a presentation of the Good Night Theater Company.